Moving on to my thought of the week here before we wrap up, guys, this week. And I'm actually going to pull up my phone. And I want to I want to elaborate on this a little bit because it, it was it was mixed responses and it's um, as as can happen. Uh, I got to look for it here. It was I put out a tweet, guys, uh, essentially talking about the it, it the, the tweet was not directed at people actually suffering from clinical depression. But it was a way to be, it was a motivating positive tweet. And again, I guess you would have to know my story. So I'm going to preface it with this. And let me read you the tweet first. In that way. So when I put this out, and and again too, I looked over this tweet multiple times. And I felt very confident putting this out. That the people that were going to understand it were going to understand it. And get motivation from it and I knew there was a very strong chance there were going to be a portion of people that essentially getting called out that and not clinically depressed people being called out people though that use saying they're depressed um, and milking it in a way and not talking about the actual clinically depressed people but there are a large portion of people that play that card that just don't want to push themselves and we all like newsflash, ladies and gentlemen, we all we all get sad. We all have depression at different points, and there's things that happen to us. And at the end of the day, we have to hold ourselves accountable, regardless. Because when you don't take accountability, it, it's you take you'll never fix your issue fully. And not saying that I know there's a chemical imbalance, but we all have shit happen to us. We all live life. We all you fucking live life and you die and you experience bad shit in your life. There's not one human that has gone through life where that's not been the case. Not one. So, with that said, and again, this is talking, I thought I worded this correctly for me where and everything is 100% true. The tweet is, being sad and relying on quote-unquote depression as a way to give up on yourself sucks, in my opinion. Always exceptions to the rule but it seems many are pulling this card now for a free pass. Here's a cure. Get up and do the work and change your mindset. Works every time in my experience. To which uh, there were a lot of uh, negative tweets with a lot of name calling. And it was, that, was a, it, that was the go-to. A lot of, you don't know what depression is. You were just sad, steroid junkie, blah, blah, blah. Typical stuff that you're going to get. The majority of them had wrestling backgrounds and wrestling names in their thing. There's a correlation between it from what I saw on all of that. Now, again, putting in my experience. So my experience may not be your experience, but I know enough people and I've seen people who I'm calling out on this that I know personally that are doing it. And I know my life and what I've overcome and what I've experienced again. We all have shit happen to us, right? And there's just different levels to all this. I'm not doubting that depression is not is 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 real. I know it is, and I've talked about it openly on TV at different points of my life where I was more than just sad. But again, I've just been rich and famous my whole life, right? So I look back and I and I'm talking from experience of breaking my ankle and leg in three places and continuing to wrestle and spiral breaking my leg and a doctor botching a surgery before I'd ever had any real success and made any money in pro wrestling, my lifelong dream. Three doctors telling me I would never wrestle again, sitting at home, a company that I loved, tried to fire me, did fire me, um, had to have three surgeries, had to do rehab every day for a year and a half did nothing, locked myself up, watched wrestling matches, and nobody thought I was ever going to come back or do anything in pro wrestling. I never made it. And that was a very depressing time. Mentally, physically, it was me. I went through a lot of shit there. Do you want to say I wasn't depressed? So, hey, I wasn't depressed, right? I fucking came back, though, and I fucking made it as ride back because I didn't give up. I held myself accountable for the situation. Yeah, all this bad shit happened to me that other people may have done, but at the end of the day, at the end of the motherfucking day, I had to hold myself accountable and take action because I can say, oh, poor me. Poor me, I'm a victim. 
Poor motherfucking me. That doctor fucked up my leg. Guess what, though? Nobody's going to get up and make me do the work. Nobody's going to make me get back and come to fucking pro wrestling and be the biggest motherfucking thing in pro wrestling when I did come back. Do the, do the work. Take action. There's a difference between being sad and being depressed. We all feel those fucking emotions. There's different levels. There's traumatic things that happen in life. That was a traumatic fucking thing that happened to me. I speak from motherfucking experience. I come back, forced to drop a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Company I love. I get up there and get fucked with emotionally fucking every fucking week. Stayed positive throughout all of it. Body starts going. That injury in my leg connected directly to my back. Those nerves run directly into my L4, L5, the two disc that first went. Fought through it. Company starts giving me fucking drugs, pumping me full of drugs to keep me going every week. I'm part of that too. I keep going every week. In so much pain, eventually, in a lot of the shit going on, I have to walk away. Walked away from millions of dollars. Walked away from TV, walked away from fame. Body completely had given out on me. Needed a five disc fusion and a shoulder replacement. Would have been really easy. I already had success. I already had money. Would have been really easy to fold it in. You know what? I give up. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with the flow. I'm gonna do what they fucking tell me. I'm gonna get my back fused and I'm gonna get my shoulder replaced. I'm gonna get fucking nice and chunky and I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna take pain pills for the rest of my life and I'm gonna be a stupid little bitch and fucking do what they fucking tell me. Or I'm gonna fucking say, you know what? I'm gonna find a fucking way. I'm 34 years old. I'm gonna fucking come back from this just like I fucking have each and every fucking time because I held myself accountable. It was on fucking me to figure out what the fuck happened. I fucking lived it. I put myself through it. I conquered it before. I'll fucking conquer it again. 14 stem cell procedures. Getting fucking needles. Fucking needles that fucking big. Stuck in fucking five of my disc. Risk of infection with that sort of thing. And just one disc. Five. Doing that fucking five, six times. Over the course of three years. Getting a fucking shoulder seven, eight times. Going to Medellin, Colombia. Going over there. Getting shit done. Rehab every fucking day, starting a supplement company, writing a book, starting a podcast, doing my investments, buying a townhouse and running it out, not stopping, not feeling sorry for myself, fucking taking care of my dog who's had seven motherfucking ruptured disc, stopped doing fucking appearances, lost all the income from appearances, from wrestling, found a way to make it work, built a successful supplement line that's fucking profitable three years in, a podcast that's fucking profitable three years in. Would have been really easy to sit back and give up. I don't want to train. I don't want to go fucking train for three hours every day. I don't want to go do my conditioning. I'm a victim. I fucking life let me down. God let me down. The world let me down. Fucking people hate me. Deal with all the bullshit. Fake motherfucking articles talking about my fucking character and who the fuck I am. From that motherfucking company I gave everything to. You dumb shits out there that talk fucking shit that will never do fucking jack shit with your lives. Because you have the wrong motherfucking mindset. You gave up on yourselves. So you don't like it when somebody tells you, take fucking action, because you're little bitches. Man, you don't, what do you know? What do you know? I know a lot. I've overcome a lot, and I sit here fucking healthy, and I will fucking be back, and I will be better than I've ever fucking been. And you're gonna still run your mouths, because you don't fucking hold yourselves accountable. You don't fucking take action. I got a chemical imbalance. Well, good for fucking you. You don't want to take accountability? We all have chemical fucking imbalances, you dumb motherfuckers. That's called motherfucking life. Oh, I can't, I can't go on. Well, don't go on then. That's your fucking choice. Because there's been plenty of fucking people throughout history in your same fucking position that have chosen to go on. You sink or swim. That's called fucking life. And when we start catering to the little bitches of this world out there that don't have the mental capabilities to fucking survive, it brings everybody down. And you will not bring me down. That's why you are blocked. You can't even fucking respond in a civilized, normal way. You go to name calling, and I am above all of that. You cannot fucking hurt me. And I have nothing but love and empathy towards you guys. I feel sorry you've given up on yourselves. Now I'm not giving up on myself. Never have, never will. And you either get it or you don't. Hold yourselves accountable. That tweet, though, was not for clinically depressed people. It's for people, and like with myself, if you're teetering on that line, just don't do what's fucking told to you. 
Maybe look at yourself. Read a book on fucking, on successful people, on mindset. Read, educate yourselves. Quit watching the fucking news. Get off of fucking social media. Quit finding ways to be unhappy. Look at the food that you're putting into your body. Look at the prescriptions that are being pumped into you. Look at the big business. Look at the big picture. Hold yourselves fucking accountable. You know what though? You got to take action. You got to educate yourselves. You think anybody, here's life guys. Nobody gives a fuck about you. You have to give a fuck about you. And if you go around looking for, oh, I just want people to give a fuck about me. You got to give a fuck about yourself. You have to live this life as if nobody gives a fuck about you. You want other people to fix your fucking problems, clean your own fucking porch, sweep your fucking porch, do the work, figure it out. That's called fucking life. You're born and you fucking die and you fucking do the work while you're on this planet. And we don't cater to those that don't do the work. Shit happens to every single fucking person on this planet and you either rise above it or you act like a little bitch and you give in and you tap out. A lot of people want to be little bitches and tap out. Not me. And there's a lot of people, a lot of people that I know that won't. And that's, that's, that's called fucking mindset. The will to live, the will to survive. I went to the doctors once. Here's another story for you guys. I went to the doctor once after tough enough, after being put on TV, after never being on TV. Got, got released from the show. I had broken ribs. I got pneumonia. Fucking... Off the TV for a few weeks after getting to fucking a taste of, of, of the big time and got really sad for the first time, like really, really sad. I went to the doctor. You know what the doctor told me? He says, you're suffering from depression. I want you to take this pill. I didn't know any better. I took that pill for a week, but I did know that I did not like the way that I felt on that pill. That doctor diagnosed me with depression. There's people you get temporary depression. We all get depressed in life. I was just sad. I, cause I did wanted to do that and I got a taste of the adrenaline and it got taken away really quickly. I probably had a chemical imbalance that I realized really quickly that, 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 that is not the answer to my problems. I have to figure this shit out. That was for me. And I always say my personal experience and I learned about my situation. I looked in the mirror and I realized why I felt sad and I could have sat there and kept feeling sad or I said, no, I'm going to fucking get back. I'm going to make them hire me. And I got rehired and I busted my ass. And I made it. And it was not a smooth ride. I lived away from home for seven years, hardly saw my family. Killed myself, got fired in that. Went through a really bad relationship. Went through uh, being a complete alcoholic for a year. Living in Louisville, Kentucky, a, function, a functional alcoholic. Drinking a huge bottle of Burnett's vodka every night. Chewing tobacco, being fucking depressed as fuck. But I kept moving, I kept moving. I held myself accountable. I was making that choice to do all of that. And I made the choice to stop all of it. Well, I'm not as strong as you. Well, you can fucking, you can see that I've done it. And you have, you can get inspiration from that or you can continue feeling sorry for yourself. Because there's plenty of people that are clinically depressed, that have severe situations that take action, that put themselves out there and hold themselves accountable. It's your fucking brain, guys. It's nobody else's fucking brain. You gotta look at the big fucking picture of the shit you're letting inside your brain. And there's always extreme rare situations and there's always uh, uh, exceptions to the rule and all of that, guys. And I'm and I, the first one to say it, but I, I'm talking from fucking experience. How many people have you ever fucking seen needing a five disc fusion and a shoulder replacement sit back here healthy fucking that have rebuilt themselves? Go ahead. Go ahead through the fucking history and time and fucking show me somebody. So you don't think I have a little fucking smidge of a fucking clue of what the fuck I'm talking about. You can sit back and spend your whole time on social media, your whole life, watching other people, criticizing other people, name calling other people. You're gonna die a lonely, pathetic fucking life. Or you can get up and fix your fucking life, look in the mirror and go better yourself and fucking inspire other human beings, motivate other human beings. There's no reason for that dumb bullshit. So that was my fucking tweet. I stand behind my motherfucking tweet. I stand behind everything I fucking say and do because I speak from fucking experience. And with that, we are moving on. That's my fucking thought of the week. <sighs> Get fired up sometimes, guys, sorry. 
Thank you guys very much for watching Ryback TV. If you could smash that subscribe, hit that like button, share this channel, and for Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com, save 10% with Podcast 10, click here for my podcast conversation with the big guy, Ryback, available on all podcast platforms. Click here. And for more videos of yours truly on Ryback TV, click here. Feed me more.